of the Learning Modular Your Rack Expansion Project, I'm going to be looking at the Verbo Spark Filter Processor. The reason I'm using my big system for this set of movies is that, in addition to being a pretty versatile filter, the Spark Filter Processor can also act as a series of individually tuned envelope followers. I'm going to be using that to trigger different percussion modules later on. And you can also use it as a simple form of vocoder. But again, that's all for the later movies. Right now, let's focus on the ins outs, and basic control of using the Bark filter processor as a form of format filter or even equalizer. At first glance, you might think it is just a graphic equalizer, and you can use that as a starting point, but it does a lot more than a graphic EQ, and there's also several major differences between this and a graphic EQ. I'm going to turn off my arpeggio for now and set up a drone. I'll turn up the VCA so it's on constantly. Turn up the filter so you can hear some sound. For reference, here's the unaltered sound, and then the sound through the Bark processor. Unlike most graphic EQs, if you pull all the bands down on the Bark processor, you hear no sound. If you bring all the bands up to their full level, you get something somewhat close to the original unaltered sound. These individual bands have a very steep cutoff, 36 dB per octave, and they overlap, and they do have a bit of width at the top. There's some space in between the low cut and the high cut for each band. You'll notice that there is an LED showing the strength of the sound coming into each band. So I play a higher note, higher LEDs will be lit. So I play a lower note, lower LEDs will be lit. And let's go ahead and go to a sound that doesn't have quite as much bass content. Each band has an individual output. So if I pull all these out of the mix, I can isolate one band by patching into it individually. So let's go ahead and grab a patch cord and plug into one of those bands and get just that direct out pre-fader. The faders have no effect on what I'm hearing through that direct output. I'll go back to the all filters output. I can also listen to the odd filters and even filters independently. By doing so, I can set up sort of a pseudo stereo output by splitting which filters I'm listening to on which side. Let's go ahead and pan these left and right. There's an odd band. I'll bring up an even band, another odd band, another even band, and so forth. You'll notice these LEDs underneath each slider indicate the strength of each band's contribution to the output. There's several things that affect the strength of those contributions. One is obviously the slider. Two, there's a dedicated control voltage input underneath each single one. So if I go ahead and hook up control voltage from the mod wheel on my controller to say the second band, I can go ahead and bring it up and bring it back out again. Now I have this set to only a five volt signal. These expect something around more of an eight to 10 volt signal. So you might need to boost some of your signals to take advantage of the full range of output. Those again add to these individual sliders. We also have a frequency scan section, including spectral tilt, which you may recognize from other Verbos modules. And also you can route a set of envelope followers 
from one half of the bands to control the strength of the other set of bands to get sort of a vocoder function. Finally, those individual envelope followers have a master decay time. We're going to play with the vocoder application and the envelope followers in later movies, but I want to focus more on what you can do with voltage controlling this spectral mix of your sound coming in. And that's what I'm going to focus on in the next movie. But first, a question. What is the Bark series, and why use that instead of the same spacings that other spectral processors or graphic equalizers use? Most other graphic equalizer type effects use a spacing that's based roughly on octaves. There's going to be divisions of octaves in between, but you'll find an octave doubling series like 100, 200, 400, 800, and so forth. The potential problem with this is that means they're always going to emphasize a particular note and its harmonics, such as a B or a C. If you have some sliders pulled up, that B may be stronger, but you play a note in between the sliders, you won't get the same boost. Well, rather than using those objective scales, the Bark filter is based on something called the Bark scale. This was a concept originally thought of by Heinrich Barkhausen, and the idea was to space these bands on subjective criteria of how we perceive changes in pitch, not nice, neat divisions of an octave, etc. The full Bark series divides audible frequencies up into 24 bands. That would make quite a large module, so Mark Verbos used 12 bands, with each band covering two Barks. By using the Bark series, your settings will not favor all the harmonics of a given note and should match your hearing in a more natural manner. That's what sets the Bark filter processor apart from other spectral processors. Mm -hmm. 